Thank you. Well, one thing is clear, and that is from the emollient tone we've heard this morning from Juncker and Barnier, we're actually very close to a deal on the backstop being agreed at the summit on the 17th of October. Um, and, of course, uh, both sides will try and present this as a negotiating victory. Maybe worth reminding ourselves uh, that this treaty, even without the backstop, is a very bad deal for Britain. It'll leave us trapped inside European Union rules. It'll leave us under the auspices of the European Court. And having given everything away in the withdrawal agreement, the worst part is that any future relationship relies on good faith. We put ourselves entirely in your hands. We put ourselves, indeed, at your mercy. And I would suggest that events that we've seen across Europe this week do not indicate that good faith exists. I'm, of course, referring to the pipsqueak Prime Minister of Luxembourg, who set out to ritually humiliate a British Prime Minister in the most astonishing way, only to be greeted like a hero by President Macron at the Elysee Palace yesterday. And it's very clear to me that keeping us trapped inside this was the objective of Barnier's from the start. To keep us inside, and you said it this morning, to keep us inside the customs union. And we've seen from other speakers today, the fear is that the UK breaks out of the customs union, breaks out of single market rules, and we become more competitive, and we become much wealthier outside the European Union than within it. Yeah, yeah. Mr Verhofstadt, we want no part of your European empire the only way forward now to deliver on the referendum is for a clean break Brexit. Once we've done that, we'll have a grown-up conversation about trade and about the way forward. Thank you. Today, about Emperor Verhofstadt's plan to build a new European empire. Today, he compared Boris Johnson to Mrs Doubtfire. But let's face it, Mr Verhofstadt is the Darth Vader of Europe. And this place, his Death Star where national democracy comes to die. As for the empire, I'm here for the 17.4 million to strike back. 75 years ago, my forefathers fought and died on European soil fighting fascism. Today, we are here to liberate the United Kingdom from the European Union. For the past three years, despite paying £1 billion a month for membership, We've been treated with nothing but contempt, and today it got worse. The so-called level playing field, I hate to play football against you, Mr Bornier, the match would be rigged. Brexit has shown that European, the European Union does not believe in democracy. Today, we are expected to be voting to call Brexit a regrettable event. Well, let me put it into language you understand. Je ne regrette rien. We are leaving the European Union, and we have no regrets. Mr Kelly, your dance for one minute. Thank you. Uh, let's be clear about where the blame for this mess lies. You start with impossible promises, saying we can keep the existing trade relationship with Europe, but rip up the rule book. You then say we can negotiate from a position of strength, despite leaving the world's largest economic bloc. You then decry all opponents of this fantasy as traitors, and then you then move on to say the British people voted for medicine and food shortages. They did not. The country I love is better than Johnson. It's better than them. Monsieur, Monsieur, Barnier, Monsieur Barnier, you wish to move on. We all wish to move on. And I know many of my colleagues are fed up with this debacle. I get it. I understand it. But let's not pretend that the withdrawal agreement would be sustainable without public sign-off. The British people need to put the reality of Brexit up against remaining in the European Union. Give us the time. Give us the options. That's the only sustainable way forward. Chairman, distinguished members of Parliament, this is my first speech in this august chamber and hopefully my last. As I entered this building for the first time, I saw a huge billboard with 
I saw a huge billboard with a uh, Sorry, quotation please, about quiet. free and fair elections. But I ask you, what is the point of free and fair elections if the result is dishonoured? What is the point of free and fair elections if the losers um, refuse to accept defeat? What is the point of free and fair elections if freedom and fairness is sacrificed because the elites think that they know best? Madam Chairman, the EU holds itself out as the torchbearer of global democracy, giving hope to oppressed people. But what is the point when it, it resents the democratic vote of its own people? In a few weeks, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, my friend, may be forced to ask for an extension to the Brexit negotiation deadline. If the EU truly believes in democracy, it has to reject that request. Even if it doesn't like the outcome, if you believe in democracy, you have to stand with the British people. Our, our exit is long Thank overdue. Thank you. I'm sorry to... I, I think it's important to recall that, um, that the, the British Parliament may be shut down, but uh, we are clearly showing today with this debate that the European Union is not what is the case in Britain. And uh, it's fantastic that the Brexit Party and Mr. Farage are, are making so much noise because they can't do it in Westminster anymore, so they have to do it here. <laughs> by the way, by the way, they are not even elected in Westminster. So, but, uh, <laughs> so you know, you know, dear colleagues, Eurosceptics, uh, they like something. They like, in fact, uh, bashing Europe by saying that the European Union uh, is undemocratic. And you can be sure that in a few moments they're going to repeat that. Huh? They're going to repeat that. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you that Jean-Claude Juncker or Tusk can do a lot of things, but at least they cannot close the doors of our house. That is not possible. So if the Eurosceptics in the coming hours now, in the coming minutes, want to use again for a ridiculous comparison with the Soviet Union, from now on they can point the finger to Westminster instead to Strasbourg or to Brussels. That seems to me the good way forward now for them.